uh, Tim Piles, ladies and gentlemen, from San Diego, California, radio personality, music promoter, and dog lover. Look at the famous right, so wall of toys behind you. Not toys, yes. collectible. What do you call them? They are collectibles. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I don't know how actual collectible they really are, but they're, they're, they're some fun stuff. Mostly stuff I've gotten at Comic-Con and related to Comic-Con. My uh, my Buddha Homer back there, or my Twinkie, or I'm gonna go get one dog for starters. All right, go get him one at a time. Yeah, one at a time. All right. So first up is the oldest, Chloe. She'll be 15 uh, in December. Oh. oh, oh, that beautiful gal. Look at her. This oh. is Chloe. Oh, that that's your eldest dog. Um, and did you rescue her? What's Chloe's story? Um, it's kind of interesting, you know, when you think of connections between people and family and friends and, and when say a, a family member like intersects with the, the music scene world that I work in. So, uh, my mom, um, brought me to a, brought me aware of this dog that was available. Um, didn't really like, I don't think she intended for me to, to adopt her, but, um, it was this woman that, uh, they couldn't keep the dog. It was a family member that couldn't keep it. So this woman connected to my mom. Well, it turns out it was my good friend, Andy Pate's mom. And Andy Pate's is probably best known in the local music scene for doing really cool visuals for uh, the album leaf and toured all over the world with the album leaf doing basically his, you know, very um, just introspective visuals that, that go along so well with the album leaf. Nice. And so, it's kind of interesting because the first dog that my father ever, um, that my parents ever uh, gifted to me as a seven-year-old was a wired-haired uh, dachshund. And so I've always had an affinity for, uh, for wiener dogs. And um, it's just kind of interesting that uh, she became available. She hated me when I first met her, like hated me. And you know what? I'd be lost without her right now, for sure. This one in particular, not to say favorites, don't tell the other ones that you're going to meet, but, uh, you know, she's been through a lot and she doesn't see anymore, but you'd be surprised how well she does and gets around and cruises through the backyard and, and just, I don't know, manages. The one thing I do miss is uh, just in the last couple of years, it, it, she used to love getting into the, into a kiddie pool. So we'd get a kiddie pool every summer out there and uh, we have a big tangerine tree and she would just go nuts for, for diving into the kiddie pool for the tangerines. And of course, since her eyesight is uh, like non-existent now, that's not so much a game anymore. But yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised that the, the life that this friggin' dog still has, like you'd just be amazed and, and, and how well she does, you know? I mean, we, we actually have one of those little halo devices for her uh, that we experimented with because she wasn't doing so well. Uh, she had a little incident at the beginning of COVID, but, uh, she, you know, she doesn't need that little device. I mean, yeah, she does a little a bit of a bumper car action, but, uh, you know, she's, she's quite the trooper and she'll be 15 in December. Oh, Chloe, we love you. Nice to meet you. Beautiful. <laughs> you okay. want another one? Yeah, who's next? You have five dogs, Tim Piles. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to try to figure this out in order of age. So give me just 30 seconds. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Who is this? And so Mojo, Mojo is a pug, obviously. And uh, he's having a little issue as of lately. We're not sure if he has like an ear infection, but um, he seems like he's having a little bit of a equilibrium issues so um, i don't know he said he's a he's a wonderful pug he he never asks for much um this has just been recently so we're just keeping an eye on him and oh, he loves tangerines so we have this beautiful tangerine tree just filled with tangerines and you know the one thing that brings this guy joy more than any of the other dogs you're going to meet are tangerines it's like ridiculous but yeah he's he's a little droopy on on one side so I don't know. We're really good about uh, taking our dogs to the vet and we use El Cajon Valley Veterinarian. Um, they're out in El Cajon. We have for years. They're just wonderful people and have been so blessed to uh, to be a part of that family. You know, when you're looking for a vet, 
that's uh, that's something, you know. I mean, I don't have kids, so so these guys are our blessing. This is Mojo, a little bit of Mojo Nixon uh, here in this guy, you know. I mean, he's adorable. We're sending you good Mojo to get better. Yeah. Feel better soon, buddy. All right, you ready for dog number three? Let's see dog number three. Oh my goodness. Uh, Let's see. I'm not looking at the camera, so I, I hope you get good shots of all these wonderful dogs. Yeah. Um, so this is Macy. Oh, Macy. Um. Now I forget where we got her from. Where'd you come from, Macy? Really? I'll, have to, I'll, I'll answer that when I get to the next dog. What I was going to say is that the previous dog, Mojo, is 14. Okay. So that puts it her puts her at about. 12 or 13 i think oh the other two dogs are, are much younger okay. so so she's a little younger than mojo same thing her tongue her tongue likes to hang out these days oh. and uh i mean they all really love tangerines to be perfectly honest i think they're mojo's favorite but um you know my wife worked at macy's for many years for for a while she worked in retail and she was a visual manager she would uh, be a dolly dresser and make all the mannequins look pretty for uh, everybody to, to hopefully inspire to buy some clothes. Anyway, um, so this is Macy. Macy, Macy, Macy. We call her Macy Moo. We've got nicknames, of course, like anybody for all their dogs. Absolutely. But yeah, um, she, she has the teddy bear belly. For some reason, I love her belly. Oh, just reminds me. I got a teddy bear right over there, but this is uh, just, uh, this is a teddy bear. I, I could imagine if I could tickle a teddy bear, this is what the belly would feel like right here. See? I've never heard of dogs liking um, citrus before. I've never heard of a dog eating an orange or a tangerine. Now, do they eat the skin? I'm, I, need to, I need to know more about that. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, they definitely eat everything. I mean, I guess my wife would prefer maybe that the seeds get picked, but um yeah we we find rinds uh, in the backyard i mean they've they've completely uh devoured the entire fruit of the of the tangerine sure you want to meet uh i guess it's calvin now okay. calvin the, the dapple wiener dog okay bye macy <laughs> this is exciting this is so exciting uh, it's calvin. calvin say hello to calvin Calvin looks very, very. Uh, Macy is 11 years old. Okay. Calvin, what are you, Calvin? I think Calvin's like four, oh, something like that. Just a babe. You know, I have to have to blame my lovely wife Sharon. Um, we had the previous dogs that you met, and like I told you earlier, um, my love of dachshunds, and it all begins with my father and my my parents uh, bringing me one home at age seven. Uh, his name was Gus, and so she, I don't know where she found this damn dog, but we ended up going meeting these uh, ladies up in a parking lot in Mira Mesa by the movie theater, and in the trunk of their car, you know, whatever they, kind of, not a van, but, you know, it wasn't like the trunk, there were these two wiener dogs, and my wife had kind of set this up, and, and damn her, damn her, like, look at this guy. Yeah. number one and and then i mean he's a dapple so i mean it doesn't even look like his head belongs on his body i mean there's just there's so many interesting things going on with this guy but uh yeah basically my wife uh kind of concocted this whole thing and i couldn't say no absolutely look at those eyes look at him he is so wise he's like i would say um like he's the one that's at my heels most of all you know kind of on my side and want to wants to figure out what i'm up to and that's pretty cool and then i always laugh because um i'm gonna break this out this is a great opportunity to do this one of my favorite characters mr. is uh mr hanky yeah. so i have this uh, life size Mr. Hanky. All right, I'm going to set that right there safely. Wait, I'm going to put him. It'll be delicate. I've so when I look at the back of my dog, oh. I don't know if you can see, ah. but the spots, 
I don't know to you to you, to maybe not to your viewers, but to me, these three spots look like a loaf somebody pinched off. I'm sorry, Calvin. Yeah, not to be gross, but he's got Mr. Hanky on his back. He's got Mr. Hanky on his back. Some people see Jesus in toast. You see poop on your dog's back. Hey, yeah. All in perspective. So, um, how does everybody? Get along? All, all the the young guys get along with the old guys, and everyone gets along. You know, it's funny since we've added maybe the next dog you're going to meet. Dynamics have changed a little bit, but like the uh, the older wiener dog and the uh, the female pug, the fawn pug that I just had, they've they've had some moments. I mean, it's it's over food or something. I mean, nobody's ever really hurt any hurt each other, but yeah, there's been that there's been a few of those like dynamics where not this guy, not this guy, and then not yet, yeah, definitely not him or the uh, like the male. Uh, Mojo, the male pug, he, uh, like I told you, he loves tangerines. So don't get near him when he's got a tangerine. Not that he, but he will, he'll, he, like, we've heard him, like, obviously let somebody know, like, N -n 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 please, no, get away. They all have personalities, right? I mean, but it's it's just funny that, uh, that, that, I don't know, they're your best friends. You want to meet the last one? Yeah, let's meet him. <laughs> oh. So this is uh this is who the hell are you? Oh my god. Uh <laughs> I'm having such a brain fire right now. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right, so I have a disclaimer. Tonight's program is brought to you by Cutwater Spirits. They're okay. Valley High Mai Tai in a can, 12.5% alcohol. And I'll just say that I'm not drinking one right now at this moment. But the precursor to all of this, Catherine Beeks, is that I've had three, <laughs> actually maybe four. So anyway, um, this is a dog I named again. <laughs> this is Maya. Um, Randomly, this dog had a different name. Uh, <laughs> quarantine, huh? Kills you. <laughs> anyway, um, by the way, those Coatwater Spirits, Mai Tais, Catherine, are uh, from Valley High, are pretty damn good. I just went there yesterday, and I'm enjoying them today. <laughs> of course, but forgetting the name of the dog you named is is kind of crazy, Tim Piles. It's, it's funny, when I thought about it, I'm just like, wait a minute, this dog's not Maya. Is she just a, a straight up chihuahua or is she mixed? I believe she is a chihuahua. I believe, yes. I don't think she's mixed with anything. She might be overfed, but uh, she is a chihuahua. One day my wife and I were going to take all four of our dogs to the vet. Okay. We were driving down the street uh, in our neighborhood, pretty close to our house. And all of a sudden we came across this fucking little dog, excuse my language. Uh, on the streets Aww. and sure enough we just stopped pulled over even with all our dogs in the car she came right up to me and all I could do was just stand there and hold this dog and, and look in the neighborhood yeah. and I just didn't you know I didn't see anybody looking didn't see anybody um, really uh, aware of their dog being missing I mean I get it it was at the moment um, so we took the dog with us and we were on our way to the vet and we we're like, well, we'll get the vet, we'll get the dog checked out and see if it has a, a chip in it or something. And um, I didn't feel right about that. So I actually ended up, uh, I think, did I post something on Nextdoor? I can't remember if I posted something on Nextdoor or I probably just went back to like the exact spot where we found her and I did discover the owner. And it was, it was kind of a weird living situation for a group of adults. And I'm not sure this woman was uh, in the right situation to have a dog, maybe. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. We made a judgment call, and we actually just gave her some money um, and and paid her for the guy, for, for excuse me, for uh, Maya here. She's a girl. And, uh, and she became the newest addition. I mean, it was one of those weird moments. I mean, especially when she came right up to me 
uh, when we pulled over and, and saw her in the neighborhood because normally chihuahuas are very skittish. And so this is Maya, the dog that I forget her name, but she is really special and really important just as much as, uh, as Chloe is. I don't know, it's kind of interesting having five dogs. Uh, keeps us entertained more than ever right now, I guess. I'm gonna let her go. Um, so let's talk about some non-dog related stuff. Um, you just, recently your show is, is in syndication. You've got a new show in Huntington Beach or something. What's going on? <laughs> I guess uh, that's not so new. I've been doing that for a few years and it's something fun. Yeah, I don't really, I guess maybe just in the last few months I've like promoted it, but Mookie, I don't know if anybody remembers Mookie who uh, has supported local music. I mean, uh, gosh, he was at 91X and yep. KPRI too, I think, or was he? He was for a little while, yeah. Um, so anyway, at one point in his career, he was at this station in Laguna Beach, um, which is actually a really cool uh, independent commercial free station. You know, they broadcast in Laguna Beach, but it's uh, it's not like a big signal or anything. But what is it anymore? Like you can stream anything if you're that interested in how somebody programs a, a radio station. So, yeah, I've been doing that for a while. Um, there's another one. Some, there was a really cool station back around when 94.9 was FM 94.9 uh, up in L.A. called Indy 103.1. Uh, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols used to do a show there. So some of those people that used to be a part of that started what still exists is an online streaming station called the the Independent FM. So what I do is I just produce a, a simple one hour show every week and I send it to both of them. Um, it's pretty cool though to think that randomly on a Thursday night on 10 a uh, excuse me 10 p.m. in Laguna Beach. Um, which is a pretty cool community that I've only visited, you know, half a dozen times in my life um, is, is potentially listening, you know, on their car radio on the 101. On their yachts. Well, that too, probably. Yeah. But regardless of all those uh, Republican uh, Trump supporters, there's actually, you know, there's been a cool art community that's been there for decades. So that, that, that is kind of cool. But yeah, I don't get paid for that stuff. That's my pure love of, of radio first and new music, just like having that access. So basically I do a show that's very similar, if not the same to what I do Sunday nights at 11 p.m. on 91X. Okay, cool. And uh, you know, I wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't for, you know, Mike Halloran or currently Garrett Michaels. Like they don't have, they don't, honestly, they don't have to let me do that whatsoever and at this point you know when stuff is is so like limited and cut back and like you know yeah it's just they don't need some dude to do some show at sunday night at 11 you know but it is one of the favorite things i do next to loudspeaker uh, yeah of course so how are you continuing loudspeaker are you guys going to the studio or are you doing it remotely how are you uh Make our company has uh, handled it where, you know, basically the salespeople, a lot of the, you know, the people that could work from home, work from home. Uh, you know, the studios can be cleaned and there only needs to be, you know, the morning shows have a handful of people less than, you know, probably three, four. But, you know, you can do these things separated. Um, they wouldn't allow Roly and Lou Niles to come in for a few months. So I was doing the show alone. And we were playing with this technology like we are right now. Uh, and we figured out after one week we could plug in this audio and I could actually like bring them on the air. And then people could like watch this through Facebook Live. We could feed it. That, so that, that was kind of fun, something different to do for a couple months. But um, no guests in the studio right now, but, but uh, Roly and Lou are allowed to come back. So that's cool. The show is not nearly as fun uh, if it's just me. Of course. You, know. yeah. you guys all have such good energy uh, and vibe off each other so well. It's just so much fun to listen to. And thank yeah. you so much for sharing the music of San Diego. We love you so much, Tim. Uh, stop it. I, I love you, Catherine. Well, anything else <laughs> you want to share with people? We, we miss you. 
I know I miss everybody. Um, I just want to go back to shows. I want to be able to book uh, Calamity and uh, Catherine Beeks and just hang out with, with Johnny. Um, you know, you guys are good people. So I, I appreciate the love. I love you. Thank you. Tell Sharon that I said hi and I give her a big hug and, and just, you guys are so cute with your dogs. Cause Johnny and I are the same <laughs> way. We don't need, we don't need kids. We have our dogs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, they're, they're, they're one of the few things that's keeping me sane right now. Besides uh, maybe the new album from Southtown Sham. They just sent this to me. Wait, let me just share this with you. Gosh, this is fun. This is like an unboxing. Ooh, look at this. Oh, they got stickers in there. But look, look at this vinyl. Ooh, that's great. That is incredible. That's like splatter puke vinyl. I don't know what you call that, but Southtown Sham from uh, down in Imperial Beach, South Bay Area. Good guys. I really appreciate all these bands that have uh, supported a guy like me all these years. Like, I'm just some schmo. I don't know, man. I feel blessed. And I've always wanted to be like this cheerleader for this town and hopefully bring it to another level. Okay, Tim, tell people where they can find you. Um, you know what? Um, social media is kind of fun. I am at the local pile, P-Y-L-E. My last name is Piles, but you can leave the S off. My name is Tim Pyle. No, but basically, yeah, at the local pile. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, probably Timothy E. Piles. But Twitter and Instagram are a great place to find me at the local pile. Currently, um, with the COVID situation, obviously, you used to be able to find me every Tuesday at the Moreau. I'm no longer at the Moreau, obviously, because they're not doing live shows. They are doing some really cool live streams. Mostly it's just DJs. Um, if you're a big fan of uh, goth music, Sabat has been streaming their Saturday nights there. And they're at the club. It's pretty cool. So if you want to hear some great dance music with Robin Roth and Bonavakian, that's something cool going on, obviously, at the Moreau. As for the Casbah, which, you know, God bless Tim Mays for letting me bring so many local bands to the club over the years. Like, I, you know, when I think, when I think about it in my head, outside of Tim Mays, I've booked more bands at the Casbah than anybody else. All right. That's kind of, kind of cool to say all these years. I mean, I'll, um, I don't, actually, I don't know who was doing or assisting him before, but it sure seems like it's been a while now. And I've, uh, I've had a lot of really cool nights to bring local bands that, to be honest, I feel like maybe otherwise they, they wouldn't have had the opportunity to play there. Maybe because, you know, there's there's kind of a, a hierarchy or a system or basically, you know, if you can meet Tim Mays and get to know Tim Mays, that's the best thing I could ever say for you. You, you don't need me. Um, question is, how do you befriend Tim Mays? Or get him to pay attention to your band. Like um, one of the coolest bands I've discovered in the last, I guess, 10 years now at this point and one that is like in the back pocket of the Casbah and Tim Mays that, that I love and I'm so excited for and, and so bummed that he, they, they didn't get to continue their world tour because of COVID are the Schizophonics. Oh. And by the way, the Schizophonics have a new record on Pig Baby Records. But yeah, listen to Loudspeaker, Sunday night, 7 to 10 p.m. And then later, after the uh, award-winning program, the Mexican National Hour that airs from 10 to 11 on 91X, uh, at 11 p.m., it is the FTW New Music Show, where I get to play a bunch of cool new music that I've discovered pretty much maybe in the last week. It's kind of fun. It's crazy. Um, there's a lot of great new music to play. I'd say in the last uh, year and a half, two years, some of my favorites are these bands like uh, Viagra Boys, The Murder Capital, uh, Fontaine's DC, uh, definitely Idols. Idols, uh, my friend called them the most woke punk band ever. So there you go. Nice. Well, thank you for those tips. I'm going to check them out. And uh, <laughs> Tim Piles, thank you for your service. The mayor, you are the mayor. And Oh, thank you. We appreciate you so much. If I had a, uh, not really a queen, what, what would you be called, Catherine? Because you've been a, a great ambassador for local music and 
I loved when you had your program on KPRI. I mean, I only wish, uh, wish I got to see you more often and God bless you for what you started at the house of blues, oh. local blues, local grooves. I always felt weird hosting those to be honest after, after. If it, was, if it was anybody else but you, I would be all bristly about it. But I was so proud that you were carrying on that, uh, that little fun thing that we started. Matt Parsons and I started that. So thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that nod. I appreciate it. And yeah, I hope that continues on once, once we're back. Yeah. Are we coming back? Anything, uh, we'll find anything out. continues. Yeah. It's yeah. all the memories we've created prior to this that is carrying us all through. And and I'm just lucky I got to go to Disneyland a lot. Dude, you 10 months and, prior. <laughs> you and Jeff Berkeley, he's the only uh, I know that will could just go like if he could go a couple times a week, he would just go. Oh yeah. That's Did he go? Does he go by himself? He yeah. probably goes. By, yeah. I don't want to say it's weird, but it's it's really weird. It's oh, I went weird. a bunch. I I went that hour and a half drive is like my meditative uh, experience. And, and like, I'm not afraid to sit next to somebody I've never met. And secondly, I'm not afraid to go to Disneyland by myself. I love that. But you know what I really need to do is go to, to Disneyland with Jeff Berkeley. So, yes, make that, make that happen. Oh, my God. You know what we'll do? Well, you know what we'll do. I know what you'll do. <laughs> you'll get kicked out of the park is what you'll do. <laughs> um, okay. So thank you once again for letting us meet your dogs. I love your uh, animal family and uh, love to you and Sharon. And thank you for being on the show. I was drunk. Thank you. <laughs> That's perfect.
That was unforgiven. Oh my God, stop. That was Unforgiven by Ruby Friedman Orchestra on the Listen Local Radio. I am so excited, you guys, to share with you that I have on my show today the fabulous, talented, beautiful Ruby Friedman and Clovis. Welcome, you guys. Hey. So yeah, Ruby, uh, <laughs> Ruby and I met back in 2010 when I was hosting the Homegrown Hour and I used to play your songs on the terrestrial radio, the legitimate radio. And so thank you for um, revisiting me all these years later uh, on my little show. I so appreciate it and have uh, appreciated being friends with you all that time and, and keeping up with what's going on in your life on the Facebooks and stuff. Um, so the fact that you're sharing some songs and your time with me today means a whole lot. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So tell me about Unforgiven. I just watched that video today. Oh my God. Amazing. Tell me everything about cool. that. Cool. Um, that song, it's spelled U-N-4-G-V-N. Like there's no vowels in it except for the U. Great, yeah. Great license plate. That's, I don't know why we did that at the time. I can't remember, but um, I wrote that with actually somebody who just called me that I couldn't pick up because I was trying to find my makeup so I could do this. Thing. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I wrote that about a relationship I, that had ended. It was the first song I wrote after a relationship ended. Okay. And that video is amazing. Who uh, produced Thank you. What's the story with that? Actually, uh, this hip hop artist named Alde, A-L-D-A-E. He's, okay. uh, he's a multi, he's a, multimedia artist and um he filmed it for us and it's shot in los angeles in, in a home of my friends and then there's also footage um at bordner's in los angeles yeah beautiful Amazing. thank you great cinematography and of course you just always your style just kills me what thank you what has inspired your style i mean it's just so amazing beautiful i don't know dramatic to me it's just it's to me i just like old stuff like old anything that's uh old i yeah. even like old men like i like old stuff i like vintage but i mean i like old music too so i'm really into like the 19 teens 20s and then i like some 30s and i just like this kind of aesthetic that's uh dark and vintage but i also like funky and punk so I yeah. guess I'm kind of into the Victorian kind of steampunk. It's all of that world. Yeah. Even the way my place is even the way my place is decorated is very much like an extension. Like there's some modern pieces, but you know, I've got like a 19 teens gigantic. Don't do it, Clovis. Stop. Persian rug, you know, and just yeah. I've got this amazing uh red velvet shit. You know, just everything's like hey, got attitude. Yeah. Yeah. No, visually you're on point. But uh, your voice is something from Thank you. the world. Um, you know, just your unique style. Obviously, people have raved about it. And and uh, but what I, I don't know. I, that's who inspired you. Who did you listen to when you grew up? I hate that question, but I have to know. I know. Well, yeah, because I, what happened really was I was put on a detour by a boyfriend that I had when I was 13. Okay. Who was into all this cool stuff. But before I was 13, my mom's a singer and I took opera lessons, classical training. Um, yeah. My mom's in show, was in show business and then married my father and then said goodbye. I think I'll just take the security. Yeah. You know, she just stayed with him and didn't do her career. Gotcha. They were living in New York, but then they eventually moved to California. So I'm the last of five and I got some good stuff through my brothers. They were really into heavy metal and hard rock. Yep. So I got some, cause I was, I'm the youngest of five. So my older brothers listened to cool shit. Yeah. Um, but it really wasn't until, and I, meanwhile, I'm taking classical training. It really wasn't until I was like 13. I met this guy that wanted to start a band with a girl singer. Cool. And uh, he liked blues and country. So he loved my voice. He just wanted me to be able to write songs. And he said, it was, oh, it's not a big deal. It's, you can do it. <laughs> so it really wasn't, you know, it's funny. If somebody tells you something's not hard yeah. and they believe in you, then you're kind of like, that was easy. You know, we, we started writing songs. Nice. Amazing. So I was, and I was, I just kind of started uh, indoctrinating. He indoctrinated me with Otis Redding, okay. Patsy Cline. Yeah. all this cool shit from the 1920s and 30s and so I was into like psychobilly and, and rockabilly and rock and roll 
and just anything he liked, I was kind of that. And then I started dressing that way. So it just kind of stuck. Okay, so let's play I'm Not Your Friend next. This song killed me today. I love it. Tell me about this song. You know, I got the inspiration of that song through a Facebook friend. I don't know this guy. What happened was I did music for a TV show. And so I have a lot of fans on my personal Facebook. A lot of fans came in and I'm just nice. I'm like, sure. Like, let's be like, so I'm friends with a lot of people from the South. Yeah. A lot of face, a lot of people are from Florida. Okay. You know, a lot of came in through video game music I did. Those are mostly in Europe, but I mean, I have a lot of fans anyway. At any given moment, I could have a teenager from Croatia commenting or an old Southern dude that's like rednecky. You know, I just never know who's who. Yeah. So, so I was friends with a lot of people right after I got this huge TV sync with the film Justified. Also, after I did some stuff with Sons of Anarchy, it got a little nuts. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know who this guy was, but he posted, he posted he just killed someone, that he had came upon a, a girl in the road. This isn't came on a girl on the road who was half naked that had just said she'd just been raped and her friend was back at the house and blah, like this big story. Wow. And then he said he went there and killed the guy. And I went to his face, I went to his page after I saw this Facebook post. I didn't know who this was or if it was true. I don't know. What. Anyway, I got so frightened by the whole thing. I was reading through the comments on his Facebook post and like this lady says, oh no, not again. Like, Everybody, it was real. Something was real about it, at least to me at that time. And I got scared. I don't know why. And I just blocked him. And I don't remember his name either. Yeah, yeah. And it always just, was like, wow, I'm friends with a guy that killed someone and just admitted to it, even though the situation looks a little, you know, righteous. And then, and then soon after, within the next day, there was somebody else who was talking about the guy that broke into an animal shelter in San Diego that had killed dogs. So then I was like, I just kind of combined the stories and created the song where I'm this, I'm this vigilante. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not your friend. Ruby Friedman Orchestra on the Listen Local Radio Show. I'm not your friend. I killed a man. If it did.
was I'm Not Your Friend by Ruby Friedman Orchestra. Catherine Beeks here at the Listen Local Show. So proud and honored to have with us today Ruby Friedman from her home in uh, Portland. You're in Portland. Yeah. Wow, we can you give us a little insight of what's going on in your little hood? Yeah, everybody wants to know, how are you? Are you okay? Okay, so there is a little tiny civil war. No, I'm kidding. It's a, it's a little it's a little war that the federal government brought to Portland because Portland has been protesting for like 61 days now, maybe 62. I'm not sure. It's 61 or 62. But the Black Lives Matter protest downtown has been going on for 61, 62 days. And about two weeks ago, the feds came in because they want to suppress it. And they put up a fence. Stop it put up a fence and the fence has caused problems. They're actually, uh, they've actually been fined by the city because of this fence. So they're, they're actually getting fined $500 every 15 minutes because this, they won't take down this fence. So anyway, it's a, like, it's a whole thing because I think Port Portlanders really resent being told, be, having their first amendment suppressed or at least threatened. So anyway, so, so now the protests are huge. Before they were like 200 people. Now there are thousands of people. And on the weekends, it's even more like a destination for, I would say, tourists even. Because Saturday, and I don't live far from there, so I can walk down there and check it out. Like during the day, nobody's there. But come around, like right now, people are probably starting to show up in a, in a big way. Like, okay, when I say no one's there, I mean, during the day now, there are about 300 people hanging out. But they're not, they're not up against the fence with signs or chanting. They're just hanging out at the park, barbecuing, and um, yeah, they're barbecuing, playing music. There's t-shirts for sale. There's free food. There's this company called, uh, it's not even a company. It was one, one dude's idea is to create food, bring it down there, make a lot of food for people and support them, like kind of be like an auxiliary troop to the, support, to the Black Lives Matter protesters. So this guy, it was called Riot Ribs as a joke. And then it got kind of like serious. So now they've changed it to Revolution Ribs. <laughs> free food free food 24 7 wow okay wow. so there are people down and because they, they had to shut down their donations because um they were getting they're, they they've gotten so many they're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars because people from all around the country and the world have been donating donating to this this guy nice, nice. so basic sort of i guess what i'm trying to say is there's a park across from the building that people don't see on the news. And it is, it's like a block party. And then when the night comes, the, the pro, all the protesters show up, or at least go to the fence and do their thing. Right. And right. that's what's going on. Okay. Do you, are you, do you feel afraid? How do you personally feel being that? Oh my God, not at all. Okay. It's one block. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does it, does it, look, does it look fearful where you're at? Yeah, they always try to post the most fearful looking shots. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I wanted to make things look fearful right now, I could do the same thing if I just had a, a right. G.I. Joe, whatever the suit is that they wear, those military people. Right. If I, wore, if I put on one of those and walked outside my apartment building and threw down a can of tear gas, it would look scary on film. Oh, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I'm not going to say they're, they're not hurting people. They are. Yeah. They're hurting people. They're hurting people that aren't even violent because those guys that are down there aren't even people trained. They're not trained for this kind of thing. So they don't care if you're like a mom, a protest mom, or one of these more, like there's a small group that like to instigate, but it's definitely not worthy of federal troops. It's like the police, the police could have handled it. Right. And then again, it's a cycle because it started up because the feds showed up. Right. Yeah. So it gets to be, it almost, I see it sometimes as a joke. It's the battle of the fence because it's literally one block. It's all about that fence. And it's this game. It's a game that started now. It feels like a game. Sorry. So yeah, sorry to go on about it, but it's like, it's the weirdest thing to find yourself in the middle of. I bet. No, thank you for the update. Appreciate that. I know that you're also a pretty hardcore animal animal rights activist, animal liberation. I am an animal rights activist first because I think I've given up on humans. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Believe me. I'm an animal rights I believe that animals are equal to humans. I'm involved with the, I'm involved with uh, direct action, and um, which is kind of an, a form of animal liberation front. I'm involved with, you know, I'm involved. Um, 
Yeah. Cool. I, uh, I don't think I've done anything overtly illegal, but I probably would if I didn't have my dog, you know, because I have to show up for him since he's like special needs. I didn't realize he was special needs. I just thought he was he's special needs. He's a French bulldog and he went blind at two because he's, well, we don't really know why he went blind at two, but he went blind. Now some of his vision, some of his vision came back. So he didn't stay blind. He was blind for three weeks. Okay. Oh, Clovis. Maybe just stress. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. They called it idiopathic optic neuritis and it happened right after the breakup with the ex-boyfriend, the one I wrote that song about. Wow. He just stopped moving and he had no vision. Like the message wasn't, it was an optic nerve thing. The optic nerve inflamed and we had all the tests done and there was never, they never had a diagnosis other than idiopathic optic neuritis, which is an inflammation on the optic nerve. And it's very, very rare. Wow. Well, I'm glad he's seeing better these days. Yeah, he's, he's has a good life. Yeah. In Portland. He loves it here because it's most, now it's hot today and it'll be hot tomorrow, but it's mostly really chill here. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And it's very, it's very dog friendly and um, yeah, he has a good life. Good. So Ruby, what are you and the orchestra doing right now that we're on the pause? Are you guys still writing? Or oh you... my God. No, I write and I'm going to, you know, I'm performing next week with the low bar crowd, which is this local, well, it's a Portland thing, but it's Oregon. It's an Oregon thing. And it's, it's, um, it's a band that gets together and they do, they have a following and they do, they, it's like a sing along with the crowd. And nice. since COVID, so they're doing, we're going to do two of my songs choose next Tuesday, but, um, like ain't got your money are you playing ain't got your money um, that's the new yeah we're playing that last yeah that's the new single and the video is going to be out soon the lyric video is up but the but and it's all under ruby friedman orchestra okay and um okay. yeah if people can go spin it that'd be great on spotify save it to your playlisting blah 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 share it that would be amazing okay let's play ain't got your money this is a brand new single tell me about it Ain't Got Your Money song about bill collectors calling me from different cities <laughs> and states on my phone that I don't recognize and writing them all. I actually started writing them all down. I'm like, wow, there's a, there's a different, you know, just all these crazy cities. Like, I mean, they're not crazy if you live there, but if you're from Los Angeles and you've only ever, well, I've lived in a lot of cities, but I just started writing them all down. And then, you know, just, it's just basically about the banks bailing out. Um, I mean, the banks being bailed out by the government and then those same banks calling me to have to get their, to get paid money they've already been repaid. Do you know what I mean? So the whole, the whole thing's just kind of, it was just in my head while these, it was basically, it's basically a student loan debt for, from UCLA. So I am, I, I, I don't think I've gotten any recently. Wow, that's weird. I don't know why they're not calling anymore. I think I wrote that song and they just evaporated. It was a spell. <laughs> nice. Nicely done. All right. Well, it's an awesome song. It's going to melt some faces right now. Thank you so much. Woo! Hanging out with Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Keep on rocking and writing. And uh, we love you so much out here. Uh -huh.
Somerville, South Carolina, Butte, Montana, Cook, Nebraska. I ain't gotta go to your money. Montana, Cook, Nebraska, Wilmington, Delaware, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Bal- 